Hello gang, welcome back to Big Board, etc, etc, etc. Thought I would touch base with you and have a conversation about Caesar Conquest of Gaul. Uh, here's the box here, so we're talking about this little baby. And I want to give you a little update on the game, uh, gameplay and the, the battle here. And later on we'll be having a look at, you know, uh, impressions and experiences and things like that. <coughs> This is an interesting scenario because it uh, deals with both uh, naval units and there's a landing and kind of an ambush and it's all very historical and there are some unique attributes. The uh, uh, chariots here are a little bit different. They're more like a horse-drawn wagon that's quick <laughs> than anything else, you know, a two-wheel wagon as the case may be. And you've got to, you've got to come in through the, this, these landing zones and you can get uh, grounded and then you have to try and get your guys off the boats and then they've got to walk through the water and then they accumulate uh, cohesion hits and all that sort of fun stuff. So lots of stuff going on and then you, you, know, you get to kind of mesh in the middle here. The thing that slows uh, or, or, or kind of kills it for the, uh, for the, the, the Britons to be successful is their route rate, route level. Uh, so they can only lose 40 points. And <clears throat> excuse me. And so that's going to uh, that's going to limit their their ability to take losses pretty aggressively. Uh, so they've already lost uh, six. If you see the sorry about the light there and the focus and all the other rest of the, all the rest of it, uh, you can see that six is the on the left is the TQ rating, the troop quality rating. And the red number above it is uh, a four, and that is the uh, size of the, the particular unit. Movement rating, rating on the right. Little J means javelin, little LC means like cab, all the usual good stuff. Then there's some you know little identifiers and bits and pieces. And some nice artwork on the counters. Beautiful maps, all the rest of it. But so the battle, the battle, uh, really half the battle for Caesar here, trying to land in uh, 55 BC on the shores of Britain is that uh, if you roll badly, I actually started this, this is the third start over of this game because the die rolling was so bad for these guys landing here, the the, uh, the galleys and the, the transporters here, it was so bad that everybody kind of got stuck like this at <laughs> the very first roll, right? And so, if you've got a, a, a seven rated or a six rated unit, like this guy, you know, there's a six rated unit here, for instance. Well, you take four, is it four? Yes, four cohesion hits for moving in that hex, then another two, and then one. So you think about that, if I'm out here, I'm stuck here, over on the right hand side here, I would take four and four and two and one. And so of course, as soon as you get to within one, cohesion hit of your actual troop quality rating of say seven well then you have to roll for route and the last thing you want to do is roll for route uh, when you're in the water because uh, although it's not particularly clear in the rules I would assume or A I assume you have to do that roll and B I assume that uh, when you route in the water you basically drown and die unless they let you get back on the boat which is not going to be possible when you're in armor with a shield and swords and javelins and all that sort of bullshit right or pillum as they actually are called so uh, or pila I should say not pillum because pillum pillum is plural I believe but uh, so anyway so you, you, we needed to get closer in. This was the best I could do. I got uh, one ship to the beach. These two guys got close enough that uh, folks could land. Some of the folks could land in somewhat shallower waters. And there's another there's another boat over here. So it was a bit of a disaster. So so Julius spends a lot of his time just trying to get off off the boats come in at a decent area. And of course, the first time I, I did this, I had these boats all too close together. Big, a big mistake. Uh, here, this, this ship uh, on the right that's got uh, the, uh, the Balearic Slinger on it uh, actually was here. And I allowed it to move back one to make some more room because the guys all got off and then we wanted to back it up. And actually, that's not a that's not a transport. This was a, a weapons platform, basically. Uh, so it, it it was pulling in, 
we decided not to press our luck and go any further so we we just backed up uh there's supposed to be catapults on the end of these so i put one on each uh, end of these so i put one on each flank and one in the middle and really i'd probably put them all down one end next time get them out of the way and, and just bring the transports in the the britons can't attack you uh unless it's uh by uh you know uh, throwing and they can only come to here <coughs> uh can't attack you um uh, really in the water so there's no shock combat in the water now if the britons were able to lunge in fast enough and get very close i guess they could cause all sorts of problems uh they could do those attack uh hasty attacks where you kind of ride in uh harass and dispersal attacks where you ride in throw javelins and ride out on the on the little chariots they can do that uh there are die rolls to prevent that uh or, or to mitigate that circumstance uh it allows you to kind of trap the uh, <coughs> trap the the Britons. Anyway, had a lot of fun with this scenario. This is basically over because I've got uh, these guys are going to route off. These guys will route off, and that's actually that should actually be a route marker. I was I ran out of route markers. Uh, here we'll just use one of these. If you add those up, that we're at uh, forty two. Now, they're not off the board yet. These guys are going to make it off the board. Whoa, good catch. And sorry about that. There's another. There's a third one here as well. Uh, so these, the, now the leaders could, in the next turn, move to jump on those guys and try and rally them. But they have very low, uh, very low ratings uh, for the... For these, uh, you know, tribal leaders and these guys are, uh, you know, are really going to suffer here pretty badly. Uh, so it's, it, it, if I do that, then I'm, I'm stuck stationary here with my forces. It's going to allow the, the rest of the Brit rest of the Roman legion uh, to get on to the board, onto the dry land, and we're going to be in trouble. Though. There are, though it is, a, it's actually a fairly close run battle here because you can see, like this is a seven rated unit. That's a six rated unit. He's got five. He's got three. This guy's had six. This guy here had five. Look at this guy. He had. Oh, you can't see. He had seven out of his nine uh, just from coming in from the water. That's one of the best. One of the best cohorts uh, on the board. Super tough uh, piece of equipment. A uh, group of men. <laughs> so this is all post uh, Marian reforms. So uh, we there's a lot of cool mechanics that make this uh, a much simpler game to play for the com for command because you don't have the uh, three different types of Roman. Uh, you know triarii and all that sort of good stuff that you need to kind of worry about and manage with tribunes. <clears throat> the post marian reforms uh, make command and control much, much sim simpler and much easier for someone like a Caesar-style commander to uh, really wield his forces in a very flexible manner. So had a lot of fun with this scenario. It's one that plays very quickly. You could probably crank this bad boy out. Arguably, you know, two, three hours, I would say. Set it up, play it again. A lot of fun. You can, you know, you could actually, you know, just, you know, worry about all this stuff here for the time being, but just move the ships in by themselves and then plop the guys on it. Work out where you're going to, how you're going to land. And if you don't think you can unload reasonably, then, you know, pull it all back and start again before you, before you really start doing anything at all with the Britons, uh, because they do set up back in, in the tree lines here mostly. And they're supposed to be hidden units and off the board. Obviously, playing solo, it doesn't really matter. And it doesn't make a difference because you're going to charge in as the Britons and just have at it and try and get them when they're, they're you know, suffering a little bit here with, uh, with losses and whatnot uh, from, from trying to, you know, trudge, in, trudge into shore uh, in their armor and uh, with their weapons. So I thought I'd just give you a quick little update on the battle. It was a lot of fun. And... Uh, we'll, uh, uh, it was all kind of kicked off by reading and looking at the uh, landmark Caesar book that I picked up for Christmas. So 
That was Britannia from Conquest of Gaul, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing what comes up next. Thanks for tuning in and having a look, and hopefully it'll get you inspired to grab one of your great Battles of History games, some GMT, put it on the table and get going. Roll some dice. Talk to you soon.